Quickie Big Dash TV. I'm Sean Muggerman. I'm joined by my co-host in Belinda Kelly. And we're excited to bring to you for the first time Quickie Big Bash TV. Yes, we are, Sean. Thank you. And can you tell us exactly what is Quickie Big Bash TV? Yeah, sure, Ken Belinda. It's a new concept the team at Quickie have come up with where it gives you guys, as the viewers, a chance to be involved in the in each episode. We've got an expert panellist that will preview and review all the games over the BBL 06 season. But if you guys out there agree or disagree with anything we have to say, you can simply press the reply button and record your own quickie to get be involved in each episode. How cool is that? Very cool. So, Belinda, BBL 6 kicks off to 9 in Sydney. We'll more, talk more about that soon. But what are you most looking forward to for BBL 6? Well, Sean, I'm most looking forward to all the fun and excitement that comes along with the Big Bash. So, it is the sixth year. We're looking forward to some big hitting, classic catches. It's getting bigger and better than ever. Yeah, it sure is. And they will pack the stadiums around. Australia this year. Now Sean, there's been some talk in the off season. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, some big stories in the off season with players moving from club to club and also a few internationals coming to the BBL for the first time. We'll start over in the Perth Scorchers. There's a big in and there's a big out. Uh, Australian ex-fast bowler Mitchell Johnson, local WA boy now. He's set to play BBL cricket for the first time for the Perth Scorchers, but they get big Mitch Johnson in the side, but they lose their cult hero. In Brad Hogg, he's 45 and he's still playing, if you can believe that. He's the Perth Scorchers leading BBL wicket taker. He's taken his talent from the Perth Scorchers to the Melbourne Renegades of the MCG. So, interesting to see how Hoggy goes at the G. Now, another story uh, going on. Down in Tassie at the Hobart Hurricanes, former English fast bowler, Stuart Broad is trying to resurrect his English one-day international career. Uh, by going to the Hurricanes and uh, seeing how he goes down there. So, it should be interesting to see how Stuart goes. So, Sean, it all kicks off tonight at the Sydney Derby. What can everyone look forward to? Yes, <laughs> it is exciting. I'm pumped. We've got BBL 06 kicking off in the blockbuster game, Sydney Derby, down in Sydney tonight. And it is, we've got last year's reigning champions, the Sydney Thunder. They are going to take on the bright pink colours of the Sydney Sixers. And there's been a big story out of the Sydney Thunder side over the off-season. Obviously, we know they won it last year, but their cricket captain, legend, Mr Cricket, has decided to hang up his uh, bat, and he's going to be their director of cricket now. But he's been replaced as captain by another ex-Australian cricketer. They've got some big names down there, the Thunder, by Shane Watson. So, Watto, you have got big shoes to fill. But I'm sure you'll do a good job in it. Now I reckon, Belinda, we go to our expert commentators and see what they have to say about tonight's blockbuster over the game. Bevo, we start with the Sydney Derby tonight and it promises to be an action-packed start to this year's Big Bash. So, who are the key players in tonight's game from both teams and who are you most looking forward to watching from both teams across the season? For tonight, uh, and the Thunder in particular, it's going to be Owen Morgan uh, and Andre Russell, particularly with the bat, to see how they're going to go. They're going to need to um, uh, perform well, without a doubt. Uh, because they're a bit thin thunder in the batting compared to last year. Uh, big big rap for Owen Morgan, obviously. A uh, great player in all conditions against all bowlers and really controls and innings quite well. Had the good fortune to run into Jason Roy and coach him in the Bangladesh Premier League a number of years ago. And he's gone from strength to strength. And he's pretty dynamic, a big hitter of the ball. And the Sixers, they're really going to need him to get them off to a great start. Bevo, as the master of finishing off a match or an innings in the short form game yourself. How important are the last five to six overs and who are the best finishers to look out for this season? Well, the last five or six overs are pretty important uh, because they can change a game dramatically in this form of the game. Uh, finishing is completely different to when I played. Um, one of the most important aspects of having someone finishing the match in a T20 is to have a big hitter um, and they they need to be able to clear the boundaries. The boundaries are slightly shorter. Uh, there are plenty of guys who can do that in this big bash competition. You've got Kyron Pollard uh, who's fantastic at it, Mitch Marsh another one, Andre Russell and they can change the game within the space of two or three overs so they don't necessarily need to be there at the end of the match 
Uh, but three or four overs from them certainly sets it up for a win for their teams. Paul, we are looking forward to a great game tonight. What do you see as some of the key factors for the Sixers to get off to a winning start tonight? Yeah, obviously they're missing um, the three test quicks in um, Bird, Stark and Hazelwood. What that means is they've had to draw upon other resources. Now, they've got some pretty handy replacements there, though. They've got Doug Bollinger and Joe Many will come into the side. Young Ben Darshwis will potentially be in that 11. Um, but Stephen O'Keefe as well, provided he's uh, fully fit and over the injury that ruled him out of uh, the test uh, summer that we've just had. So I think their bowlers are going to need to... Um, do a good job to restrict those um, those thunder batsmen because they've got some power with Andre Russell and Owen Morgan, Curtis Patterson, Aiden Blizzard. So uh, the bowlers are going to have to do well. We know their batting will be explosive. Jason Roy, Sam Billings, Brad Haddon, they've got some power there. Moses Enriquez. So they will be good. I expect the Sixers to actually uh, do, a, do a good performance tonight. Hi, Greg. Welcome to Quickie Big Bash TV. Hey, Being a prodigious big hitter yourself. Who are a few of the big hitters that will be on display tonight in the Sydney Derby between the Thunder and the Sixers? It's going to be a great game. Plenty of big hitters on show. Two that stick out for me for the Sixers, Jason Roy, uh, Englishman, got uh, England home recently, 43 off 21 balls against South Africa. He can hit him a long way. But the bloke who's the big bomber, Russell for the Thunder. Uh, Andre Russell, when he hits them, they go a long way. I've seen Joel Garner hit the clock at the SCG back in the 80s. But I've seen Andre Russell hit one so far outside the SCG, it was over where elephants go and die. It's going to be a great game, Muggsy. Greg, we saw Australia struggle at this year's 2020 World Cup. So there's plenty of positions up for grabs. Who are some of the young players that you think will want to put their name up in lights off some good BBL form this summer? Tell you what, Muggsy, there's lots of young players that could find themselves in that uh, Australian side. Chris Lynn from Queensland, I think he's got to get a real good go this year. Um, I think the way the selectors have uh, shown their hand this year in the test arena, they're prepared to make changes if guys aren't performing. That could well happen in the T20 arena as well. The one fellow I do want to see play T20 cricket this year for Australia because he's such an exciting player. He's a match winner. Australia needs him and uh, his teammates need him is Glenn Maxwell. Um, maybe a little trip to uh, a calming down therapist or something for Glenn will do the job. Good luck, Glenn. We need you in the team. Thanks, Muggsy. Paul, it's already been a busy summer of cricket with the test series between South Africa and now Pakistan underway. But all eyes on BBL 06, the opening game, Sydney Derby tonight. What are some of the things that you're looking forward to in BBL 06? And also, who are some of the key players to look out for? Oh, it is, in my opinion, the, um, the really premium product now in 2020 cricket around the world, which is um, what everyone's getting into. Um, I am looking forward to the power hitting, the non-stop entertainment, but I think that this is the year where bowlers might potentially have a little bit of their revenge. And um, I think we've seen, we've almost pushed the limits on how far innovation can go with batting. Let's see um, what the bowlers can come up with to try and restrict um, batting power plays in particular. Um, tonight, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Jason Roy and Sam Billings deliver for the Sydney Sixers. I think they're two of the recruits of the tournament this year. Paul, who do you believe is the best opening combination in this year's BBL 06? And if batting first, what do you think teams are looking to do in the first five to six overs? Yeah, that's a really good question because I think um, the first five or six overs really do shape your innings. I've asked around a few of the, um, the astute batting coaches around the league. They're telling me around that 50 mark is, is pretty par. They normally work on about 50 for the first six. Um, they want to be 100 after 13, work to about 180 afterwards. I think that the Renegades have potentially got the most powerful combination, Aaron Finch and Cameron White, but there's so many to choose from. I'm excited about seeing what Adelaide come up with, Tim Ludeman, and they've recruited Ben Dunk this year. Um, they're going to be good. Perth are always fantastic. Sean Marshall will play a lot of games for them, so plenty to choose from. Um, but, yeah, look for some explosive hitting in that uh, first six overs to get teams going. Joseph, welcome to the Quickie TV Daily Bash BB L06 panel. Can you tell us who you see as some of the up-and-coming young players this season? 
Thanks, Belinda. I'm going to talk about three players. Firstly, Marnus Labashain from the Brisbane Heat, a young batsman. He was named player of the tournament in the recent Matador Cup. Hasn't been picked to take on the strikers on Wednesday, but I do feel he'll get plenty of games this season and has plenty of runs in him, so watch out for him. Now, another young batsman. Also, this time, though, from the Adelaide strikers, Jake Weatherall. Now, Jake averaged above 47 in the Matador Cup, now, he scored 141 off 104 in one of his innings, so he's looking very comfortable at this level. I think he'll get plenty of games and score plenty of runs this season. Finally, a young bowler, Ben Dwarshus from the Sydney Sixers. He said at the start of the year he wants to replace Brett Lee in the side. He's played seven T20s, nine wickets so far, a best of three for 25, and he's also handy in the lower order with the bat. Joseph... Chris Lynn is certainly a household name now in Big Bash cricket. How important is Linny to the Heat's chances? Belinda, Linny's critical to the Heat's chances this season. Reason being, looking at their overall squad, they're very thin on the bowling stocks. So I think they're going to need to score close to 200 in each game to be any chance of winning. Now that's going to come down to Chris Lynn and Brendan McCullum. If both of those guys fail, I think they could really struggle. However, what I will look at is back in the 2012-2013 season, they won what was then the Ryobi Cup. Now it's called the Matador Cup. They've done very well in that this season. Back then, Darren Lehman was coaching them, no longer in charge, obviously, head of the Aussie squad. But what they did is they translated that form into Big Bash and they won there. They could do the same this season. I do think they're finals bound, but a lot of it does depend on Lynn. G'day, Angry Dad, and welcome to Quickie Big Bash TV. The Melbourne Renegades and the Melbourne Stars are yet to win any silverware in the Big Bash. The word is that they both struggle with the intensity of 2020 cricket. Do you agree with this? Good question, Muggsy. But, you know, like we know, it's a whole new season. So form from previous seasons is a fair indication. But I think if you look at the stars and the fact that they've backed themselves with no change to the 18-man lineup, they're obviously confident that they've got the cattle that can actually make a difference this year. So we'll watch with interest. Renegades, clearly to fill the... The void left by Chris Gale might have a bit of extra work to do. The three changes they've made, they're clearly happy, you know, will be what they need to, to give it a shake. So I'm looking forward to watching it, actually. So bring it on. You'll probably find me in the outer with an empty KFC bucket ready to catch a ball. Mark, the super talented Glenn Maxwell is currently out of the Australian side. What's your view on Big Maxie and how important is he to the Melbourne Stars? And when do you think we'll get to see Maxi back in the green and gold representing Australia? Oh, I think for, for all fans' sake, you want to see the best players playing for their country. So, you know, I think Maxi's got a great opportunity here to prove everyone that he's worthy of a cap. I think, you know, surrounded by Peterson, Hussey, Faulkner and the like, they've been there, done that. I'm sure that they'll get him through. He'll actually be regretting the last few weeks and wishing he could have part of that time again it is what it is we can't change it he's a superstar he brings in the crowd people love watching at his best so fingers crossed he can actually put that behind him and we can see the real maxi in action so it's exciting i reckon jake being our resident english panelist who are some of the english players that you're most looking forward to seeing play in this year's bbl 06 series Thanks, Sean. Um, to name a few, you've got the likes of Chris Jordan, Jason Roy and Kevin Peterson. But the one to watch is definitely Owen Morgan, who's captain in the Thunder tonight in Watson's absence. Paul, who do you think finishes higher this BBL 06 series? The Perth Scorchers or the Hobart Hurricanes and why? Oh, that's an incredibly tricky question. Every single year I make the mistake of riding off the Perth Scorchers and every single year I uh, probably make the mistake of, uh, of thinking that the Hobart Hurricanes are going to be a lot better than they are. Um, I think that the Perth Scorchers are actually going to be pretty good again this year and the reason why, their top six is, in my opinion, the best in the competition. They've got both Marsh brothers, Michael Klinger, they've added Ian Bell to their side, um, Cameron Bancroft and... Um, Look, I, I just think they're going to be really dynamic. The, with the ball, they've had a few injuries. Um, Hobart Hurricanes, I think they're going to need a lot better from Kumar Singakara, but we're talking about one of the all-time greats. If, if he can deliver for them, they'll be good. But I think the Perth Scorchers are going to be uh, there, thereabouts once again. 
Michael, time for a prediction before a ball is bowled. Which two teams do you think will make the BBL 06 final and why? Oh, has anyone got a coin? Um, I'm a, a notorious fence sitter uh, and it is a tough decision. A lot is probably going to rest on who the Australian team picks in the one day side and who actually plays in the BBL uh, forthcoming season. It's hard to go past the two Melbourne teams. They seem to have um, a really well-balanced squads with plenty of talent. I like the addition of Hogg and Noreen in the Renegades to shore up their middle overs bowling. But if I had to make a guesstimate at this point in time, I'd be running with, I think, the Stars. Uh, the Thunder may struggle a little bit this year and a lot will depend on how Cummins goes and Kawaja again. Greg, time for your prediction of who are the two teams you think will play off in the BBL 06 final. Who wins and why? Tough one. The Thunder will play the, six, uh, will play, uh, the Brisbane Heat in the final. Now, I say that because obviously the Thunder won last year. They got a great side. Pat Cummins back. I love watching that young fella bowl. Russell uh, is a formidable task with the bat. Usman Kawaja gives them a great balance. Shane Watson, what a wonderful captain. Uh, against the Brisbane Heat, McCullum comes into the Brisbane Heat. He and Chris Lynn will destroy some teams at the Gabba. They both play on unique conditions. The Sydney track will turn. It's slow. You've got to know how to bowl on it. And most importantly, you've got to know how to bat on it. And January in Brisbane is humid. The ball will swing. It will seem. McCullum will steer the heat to a victory over the Thunder in a fantastic final. Michael, the Thunder skipper Shane Watson will miss tonight's game and likely the next game against the Renegades. So how important is Shane Watson to the Thunder lineup, and can they open their title defence with a win without Watto? I think they can open up with a win without Watto, although it is going to make it a lot harder. Um, in addition to Watto, they're missing some serious firepower with the bat, and that's where Watto will be missed most of all in the next two games, I think. Without Callis, Hussey, uh, Kawaja, uh, there's a big hole there that, that someone else is going to have to fill. So um, we all know how good an all-rounder he is and how much of an impact he will have. Uh, so he'll be a big loss in terms of the rest of the season. They really need him firing as a captain to be any chance of repeating their heroics of last year. Michael, Pat Cummins is back for BBL 06. Now, he had an amazing test debut back in 2011 against South Africa where he took six wickets. Now, he's been plagued by injuries since. So how important is he tonight and for his team? He's going to be extremely important. I think everyone wants to see Pat Cummins firing again. Bowling 145-plus out swingers. These are the types of bowlers that really make a difference in 2020 cricket wicket takers and so for him I think his role will be to take wickets you know in the first couple of overs without a doubt um, and if he can do that it's really going to enable Thunder to get off to a good start from a bowling perspective which they will need because that will be their strength and if they're going to win tonight's match in particular then it will be it will be through their bowling more likely than their batting so he's got a big role to play. Joseph, what do the Sixers need to do to win tonight? And what do you make of the Sixers playing roster this season? Belinda, I think for tonight, the Sixers are really relying on Moses on Reeks. He's a leader on the field, obviously great with the bat. If he can score some runs and make the right decisions out there, I really think they can do it. I'm actually tipping a bit of an upset. The reason for that, the Thunder have lost some big names. Obviously, Hussey, Jacques Callas, they're big losses for them. They're defending champions. I think some of the hype could get to them, so I'm actually tipping the Sixers to get up. For the rest of the season, they're, they're going to struggle. The reason being, uh, they've got Josh Hazelwood and Mitch Stark in the team. Now, both of those guys are given an international duty for a lot of it, and I think that's really going to take its toll as the season goes on. Paul, who are some of the Sixers players we should keep an eye out for in BBL 6 and why? 
Yeah, the, the Sixers are probably victims of their own depth a little bit. They've got five players who probably won't feature for them in the tournament. Um, the the three pace bowlers for the test side in um, Bird, Hazelwood and Stark. Obviously, they've got uh, Steve Smith and Nick Madison, part of the Australian team too. So they've... But they have got incredible resources to draw upon. The one player who I think is going to add real value for them is Johan Bota. Now, he was an overseas player previously. He's just got Australian citizenship. So that means that they can also have another two overseas players. And they've brought in Sam Billings and Jason Roy, two Englishmen who are explosive hitters, two of the best in the world. And uh, Moses Enriquez just is Mr. Consistency in the Big Bash. And I think he's going to be good. Brad Haddon's there. They have got good depth. Don't rule them out altogether. Andre Russell, the big West Indian power hitter, is back for BBL 06. What can the Australian crowds expect from big Dre Russ this series? Oh, I think we can, uh, we can expect more of the same from Dre Russ. Um, he's the most successful 2020 cricketer around the world. He's played for six franchises over the past 12 months and won every single competition. That speaks volumes for... Uh, his ability, power hitting with uh, with his Spartan bat, uh, amazing in the field. He took one of the catches of the tournament last year and um, express pace bowling. He's one of the quickest in the competition. He is entertainment 101. Can't wait to see the Dre Russ in action and uh, what a thrill to have him here back on Australian shores. And the Thunder are going to need him. I think they're going to need big performances from Dre Russ if they are to repeat uh, their title performance again. The Daily Bash is brought to you by Sportsbet. And now for the odds on tonight's game. Jake, who does Sportsbet have as the favourites tonight? And what are the odds? Thanks, Sean. It's been a bit up and down the past couple of days, but we've got a Thunder at $2 and the new favourites, the Sixers, at $1.85. Jake, what are some of the best bets tonight that has taken your fancy? Thanks, Sean. I'm definitely going to have to go for the big hitting West Indian, Andrew Russell, for the top run scorer of the Thunder at $5.50. He's definitely going to be hitting some big bombs tonight. For the final word on tonight's game, we cross to our celebrity tipster, Mahatma Coat. Mahatma, what is your prediction between the Sydney Thunder and the Sydney Sixers? <laughs> Thank you very much, Muggsy Malone. The Sixers are going to come out and they're going to be firing Bollinger. O'Keefe will provide plenty of spice in the attack. Little Greg Shepard, the coach who spent half his life as a circus performer as a kid, he will have many of tricks up his sleeve. But Cummins will be back for the Thunder with him. Andre Russell, that is it. The boy who will come out with guns in his pockets and they will be blazing. I am telling you what, they will be too strong for the Sixers. Russell, the man with the biggest bat in the competition, is just going to be too good for the Thunder and they will take this game in a very close one. What a match. What entertainment. Goodbye for now, Muggsy Malone. I had my coat. Bugger me. Thanks for watching today's episode of The Daily Bash. Make sure you comment and even send in your very own quickies on all the hot topics we just discussed on today's episode. And make sure you tune in every day as we cover all the ins and outs and hot topics and results over every game of the BBI 6 season.